When I first saw the new 7th generation iPad, I wondered why Apple even bothered to release an updated model this year. Sure, the 10.2-inch display reveals a slight boost in size over last year's 9.7-inch iPad, and the latest model finally has a smart connector, but for all that, this iPad has the same cameras and A10 processor as last year's model, the form factor hasn't changed significantly, and it's even ever so slightly heavier. Both models still only come in 32GB and 128GB configurations, and both deliver around 10 hours of battery life. Let's get this out of the way now. If you have last year's 9.7-inch iPad, I see no reason to upgrade to this one. But after a few days with the new iPad, I think I get Apple's line of thinking. The agreeable $329 starting price, the extra viewing room, the theoretical options afforded by the smart connector, and the general excellence of everything under the hood, combines to make this the best and most approachable entry-level Apple device. This was also true of the older baseline iPad models, but by including the smart connector, Apple ensures that this comfortably sized tablet comes with virtually every external hardware feature you can expect from its pricier models. It hit shelves with Apatos 13, which greatly expands the productivity possibilities for Apple's tablets. With the success of Apple Arcade and hopefully of Apple TV+, people outside the ecosystem are suddenly looking for affordable, low-commitment devices for enjoying the Cupertino company's new services, and this device gives these potential newcomers little to complain about and much to fall in love with. With the 10.2-inch iPad, entry-level Apple now looks more appealing than it has in a long time. The biggest outward difference in the two models is that this year's iPad is simply larger than last year's. At 6.8 by 9.8 inches, the new model sits directly on top of last year's refreshed iPad Air, with only an extremely minimal thinness advantage in the Air's favor to distinguish them. Last year's iPad measured 6.6 .6 by 9.4 inches. They look so similar, in fact, that I kept accidentally picking up the iPad Air while preparing this review. That, in turn, translates into a boost in the size of the display size for the new iPad, as the unlaminated LED display comes with a resolution of 2160 by 1620 pixels, compared to last year's 2048 by 1536 pixels, although both have a pixel density of 264 pi. The iPad Air's 2224 by 1668 display is a tad larger than both dot that's a tiny difference on paper, but you'll feel it if you're using the first-generation Apple Pencil to highlight text or scribble notes, or draw in an app like Procreate. Think of it this way technically the iPhone 11 Pro Max isn't terribly bigger than the iPhone 11 Pro, but you notice the size difference in your hands. The extra room means also you have more room for enjoying Apatos 13's improved multitasking features, and more room enjoying Apple Arcade games or basking in the visuals from your favorite shows. I do wish Apple would have been able to deliver even more display space by embracing the near edge-to-edge -edge design of the 2018 iPad Pros, but Apple likely wouldn't have managed to keep the price so low if it had gone that route. Those models use Face ID and associated true depth sensors which greatly simplifies unlocking your device and logging into sites but currently seems to command a higher price. For now, with this model, we're stuck with Touch ID and the thick bezel look of the older iPads. It still works fine, but it increasingly looks outdated in this age of razor-thin bezels. Conscious of its spiritual and moral heritage, the union is founded on the indivisible, universal Conscious of its spiritual and moral heritage, the union is founded on the indivisible, universal values of human Conscious of its spiritual and moral heritage, the union is founded on the indivisible, universal values of